Cassini will have one last task. Fire up its engine to change course, diving into Saturn, setting off its nuke, and igniting Saturn into the second sun in our solar system. Saturn ignition, coming soon. Asterisk? Uh, maybe not. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... Zoo. Hey, y'all. Get ready to say farewell to Cassini. And this article is brought to us by the bad astronomer Phil Plate at Bad Astronomy, which is now at Sci-Fi Wire. And I know a lot of people are like, oh my God, Saturn is totally evil. Um, it is the black cube, and the black cube is what has been making everything evil on Earth for a long time. But I have a different take on it. I don't think Saturn is evil at all. I think Saturn is neutral. I think it's been mind controlled by Mars, and Mars has made a total asshole. So the problem is not Saturn. Saturn is neutral. Much like the monolith in 2001, it's neither good nor evil. It's a matter of what you do with it that's good or evil. Saturn's kind of the same way. And unfortunately, for some reason, Jupiter's been like scared of Mars, even though Mars is like dwarf compared to Jupiter, you know what I'm saying? But Mars has some crazy red magic going on. All right, let's get to the real science. Asterisk. On September 15th, 2017, the Cassini Saturn probe mission will come to an end. The spacecraft launched in 1997 and entered Saturn's orbit in 2004. In the following dozen or so years, it has returned nothing but wonder, incredible data, and images of the planet its rings, and its fleet of bizarre moons. I agree. Cassini's probably the top mission NASA's ever put out. Whether you think it's all Photoshop is definitely giving us some of the best Photoshop images we've ever seen. Or real images. And it's definitely giving us some of the coolest stuff we've ever seen. Like the landing of the one probe onto Titan, which they released like 10 years later. That thing is pretty awesome and mind-blowing. Pretty much looks like Earth with lakes, trees, and rivers. But they're like, oh, it's methane. And nothing lives there. And I'm like, oh yeah, if that is real, then I'm pretty sure stuff lives there. But nobody listens to me, so let's listen to Phil. But all good things, dot, 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 the spacecraft is nearly out of fuel. But I think Phil is going to say all good things must come to an end, but they only allow him to say so many words. A definite limit to its useful lifetime. Rather than let it simply die, the flight engineers have set it on a course of increasingly riskier trajectories, diving from above the planet to just outside its rings. On April 11th, a new set of commands will be uploaded to Cassini, ordering it to fly by the massive moon Titan on April 22. This will alter the trajectory once again, setting the spacecraft to dive between the cloud tops of Saturn and the inner edge of the rings. There may be a stray ring particle in there, so there's no guarantee Cassini will survive. A collision with a snowflake at 120,000 kilometers per hour is roughly the same energy as firing a high-speed rifle bullet at the spacecraft. Wow, so he's basically saying, if you got hit with a fart at 120,000 kilometers per hour, you would die. Sorry, I felt the seriousness of Saturn made me try to inject some sophomore humor in there. The outcome of either of which is not healthy. The spacecraft will change its orientation to put its main antenna dish heading into the direction of the flight, which will hopefully protect more delicate parts if any collision were to happen. But if the volume of space is sparse enough, Cassini will have one last task. Fire up its engine to change course, diving into Saturn, setting off its nuke and igniting Saturn into the second sun in our solar system. Saturn ignition, coming soon. Asterisk? Uh, maybe not. The folks at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab have created a stunning video to visualize the series of events and want to make this full screen and high resolution. Oh, it's going to be high resolution, baby. Wow, that last scene. So why do this? Why not let Cassini orbit Saturn forever, a memorial to our exploration? Whoa, are you saying a memorial to... Space exploration, because, you know, it does feel kind of dead, bro. Especially human space exploration. That thing is deader than Elvis. The answer is that you can't. What? <laughs> the gravitational environment of Saturn is complex. The ever-changing positions of the moons means that a permanent orbit would be near impossible to achieve, given the fuel that's left. That, in turn, means any path it follows is not predictable. Over time, it could burn up in Saturn's atmosphere, but it's also likely it might hit a moon. And the last scenario is unacceptable to NASA's Cassini team members. Enceladus is a small, icy moon that we know has the towering geysers of water erupting from its south pole. And those show us that an ocean of water exists inside the moon. We don't know if conditions there are conducive for the existence of life. It is. But given the circumstances, even a tiny risk is too large. So they're just going to assume there's no life on Saturn and crash it in there? That makes sense, dude. Yeah, I don't know. No, it doesn't. It doesn't make any sense. It seems like you are altering their environment, which is not something you're supposed to be doing, but whatever. NASA crashes their nuclear probes into like every planet, you know, so whatever. Cassini almost certainly has microbes 
on it brought from Earth. Complete sterilization of the spacecraft is impossible, and so the decision was made to ensure no contamination will occur. Well, how do you know you're not contaminating Saturn, bro? Cassini will fly into Saturn, where the huge pressure of its passage will tear it apart and burn it up. Even then, it will do what it can to return data to Earth, learning as much as possible before it's too late. The finale is as inevitable as it is bittersweet. A robotic proxy will become a human-made meteor, merging with the planet it was sent to study, becoming one with the crown jewel of our solar system. And what it means and what it will leave behind is a vast legacy of knowledge that will keep curious scientific minds exploring it for many, many, many years. As fates go, that perhaps is not the worst one. Man, if I was the king of NASA, I would definitely have some type of satellite probe around every single planet in our solar system, and I would have scattered like 100 GoPros and the asteroid belt. But, you know, that, that's not how they work. Anyway, peace out. God bless everyone. I'll follow this story till it, uh, to its bitter end. And we'll get more into the weird creepy Saturn stuff later. You know, like the hexagon and all right, whatever. Peace out. I'll count down from five. You can leave now if you can't handle it. Five, four, three, two, one. Mm -hmm.